Nobody wanted to have a coloured chap on their team. And back then there was only a couple playing in the league. Spurs had one called Tull, Walter Tull. He wasn't a bad player by any stretch. Not the type to shy from a tackle. I played against him, goalkeeping for Leicester. And I could hear the boys on the terraces behind me chanting, shouting all sorts of terrible stuff at him. Then, after some terrific lot of abuse in a match against Bristol, all of them at Spurs said, No more! We can't act playing with a black fella. And after that, Tottenham straight off asked him to leave. That wasn't long before the war broke out. Everywhere you went, there were huge posters everywhere. Patriotic slogans, pictures showing German soldiers marching through Belgium with babies on bayonets, all to get you on side. You felt it a duty to join the team. The Pals Battalions were very popular back then, and we'd had a letter about joining the footballers one for players and coaches like, all joining up as one sort of regiment. We were already quite fit and sporty, and depending on who you were, mind, you'd get through the process without much of a hitch. You'd get some training then, a few physical jerks through Richmond Park, running and jumping. And that was that then, you were a soldier. And you were fired up for it, of course. You wanted to be that hero on the poster. We'd left late in the evening from Folkestone, and on for Boulogne in France. We disembark and sort of amble our way out the troop boat, boys all joking and the injured, the wounded ones. You would see them, and they were returning back in it, in the boat. You sort of crossed paths. Some were quite disfigured, but you didn't like to look. I felt terrible, really. But that realisation of it all then, it starts flooding right in, I tell you. You began as one of the fresh ones lumbered in the backline trenches and you could see the action but in the distance like fireworks, just not very well regulated fireworks. And from the off I never took to the trenches, just crawling with French rats. Rats absolutely the size of cats these things, well kittens, and they'd scamper over your sheet at night. That's when I found Walter inevitably having some trouble fitting in, and we quite quickly formed a bond. I wasn't the cleverest with a rifle, and he was quite sharp. In times like that, you build up a sort of comradeship, and you couldn't be so fussy as to who it was. You had to have a pal to get you through it. It was about a year or so in when we were marched off to the Somme. A hellish place where you were soon rotated up to the front lines. Over the parapet you'd see the dirt from the sandbags dancing up and down and the noise was like a hundred trains over the top of your head all at once. We'd gone three months without a break and nine days on the front line. You were on edge. Your nerves were shot if your body wasn't. And it had got to Walter. Bit by bit he was going to pieces. I persuaded him to go to the first aid post about 50 yards or so back behind the lines and they told him it was the shock from the shells, acute mania. And back then, if you were coloured or what have you, they would label it as cowardice. So they took him out and back to Folkestone. And I was pretty hurt at the time about it, cross actually, that he'd left me alone. Our evening roll calls started off at 469 men, and by the end of the offensive, about 80 of us were answering. So they began recalling a lot of the affected men to come back, back from Britain. And so after only a couple or so months, Walter was shipped back to us. By that November, December time, we were finally moved out of the Somme on a cattle-type train. Eight horses and forty of us, off to northern Italy. Our Major, Sid Lawford, was asking around to form a small team, one to cross the Piave River 
and raid the German lines secretly at night. But blow me, Walter volunteered. It was wide, if not wider than the Thames, and lined with lookouts. We were chancing our arm all the way, weighed in bare-chested, smothered in whale oil we were, and stumbling in the dark through the river and over to find where the Germans were positioned. Walter led a team of 26 that night, like ducklings behind him, and everyone trusted him with their lives. And by some miracle, not one of us came back with a scratch. It said in the officer's guide, no one to be promoted who's not of European descent. No black man should be in a position of command. But by January time, Walter had led a good handful of these quite hairy missions. And so they broke the rules for him and made him then an officer, our officer. And not only that, but for these night missions, Lawford had recommended him to receive the military cross. High praise. But it was more than just the medal for Walter. It was that feeling of being one of the team, I think, that he took to. So, for the rest of us, mind, our reward for what we achieved in Italy was marching back to the Somme again. Back to the noise, the rotting smells, the lice, the rats. And all this, you could see it. It was all still very fresh for Walter. Countless numbers were dying in the mud back there. The Germans were really pushing us. A few weeks grace and we were moved back up to the front line to go over the top. I remember most the sound of the rain on the tin helmets that morning. You'd line up and told, fix bayonets, and then you'd just waited then waited for the whistles going down the line, just like back on the football pitch. Now followed Walter up and we ambled forward through the mud and the bullets started to whiz past you. You were running towards the guns that were shooting at you. Fratton on my side got hit straight through the thigh. Lads were dropping either side of me. And then our lads started shelling from behind. But then for you hear this, fall back, chaps, get back. And I spot Walter ahead of me, not having any of it, kept heading forward. And I'm calling out, we can fall back. Top of my lungs shouting at him. The lads left a hot foot in it back behind me to our trench. I turned back for Walter, and I can't see him. <laughs> 